Hey, so this is Randy from America's Parks. I've been visiting our nation's national parks now for about 25 years. And quite often people watch my videos and they comment how beautiful these national parks in our nation really are. When I ask them as to why they don't go on a trip for themselves, the response I get back is oftentimes the same. Either they don't know where to start in their preparation or they think the preparation is simply too difficult. So I've been asked over the years to put this video together to show you the steps that I have taken that have proven faithful to me to plan a national park trip. It's not that difficult. And for me, it's actually quite enjoyable. So now you might modify what you see in this video. You might choose to reverse the order and customize it to your own liking. But either way, I hope that this video will prove useful to you. And I hope this video will motivate you to get out and experience the gorgeous lands that we have set aside as a nation. So with that said, let's get started. Number one, select a national park or parks that you wish to visit. Now, this is really a subjective call based upon what you've seen from pictures or heard by word of mouth, but where would you personally like to go? If you need some suggestions, check out our website where we have most of America's national parks listed by state. Now in this step, be sure to do your research. Is the park open? How much will it cost? When is the best time of the year to visit? For example, some parks are very crowded in the summer. Some have issues with seasonal insects. Some can be very hot or very cold at a specific time of the year. Some deal with excessive rain or frequent storms during particular months. Again, by all means in this first step, do your research. Number two, determine what other parks are in the region. Here, a good atlas will be your friend. Not all, but many of America's national parks are grouped within a geographical region. Therefore, with minimal driving, several parks can be combined on a 7-10 to 10 day trip. For example, take the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. You can see on one trip the Badlands, Minuteman Missile, Wind Cave, Mount Rushmore, Jewel Cave, and possibly even Devil's Tower. But with this step also comes your first philosophical question. Do you wish to visit multiple parks with a little time at each park or visit one or two parks with an extended stay? We often lean toward the former, which gives us motivation to see the park again in the future and explore what we might have missed on a previous visit. Also, it's important to remember that different national parks will necessitate different stays. As I just mentioned earlier, Badlands is a minimum two-day park, whereas Jewel Cave could be covered in a half day. Other popular regions in the United States would include Southern Utah, Washington, D.C., various parts of California, various parts of Arizona, Southwest Texas, Southern Colorado, Northwest Wyoming, Southern Florida, and Northern Michigan, just to name a few. Number three, draft a preliminary itinerary. So at this point, you have a general idea of what park or parks you wish to visit. As a result of that, now begin to put together a very general itinerary. Make sure you answer the five following questions. Number one, when will you begin and when will you end this trip? How long will you be spending at each park based upon what you wish to see? At what location will you be sleeping each night? How long will the driving distance be between the individual parks? And the last one is, number five, do you wish to have any downtime? If so, work that in your schedule. When the answers to these questions are determined, draft that preliminary itinerary. And be sure to make sure the itinerary works with your allotted vacation time. If not, make modifications. Number four, book your airline tickets. If you are traveling by air, booking tickets is always my first commitment. My goal in advanced planning here is to find the cheapest flights. I will also slightly modify my trip based upon the varied expenses of airline tickets. Personally, I prefer to travel nonstop. I also enjoy arriving early at a location with time to still enjoy it on my day of arrival. Lately, I've even chosen red-eye flights to save the added expense of another campsite and the need to pack up camping equipment early in the morning also with the fear of potentially disturbing my neighbors. Be sure to choose an airport that is closest to your region. 
And generally speaking, the larger the airport, the less expensive your flights will be. Number five, book your car rental. I usually book my car rental at the same time I book my flights. To save money, pick up and drop off your car at the same airport. Most offer now, but be sure to get unlimited miles and free cancellation, which is great if a more affordable fare becomes available in the future. A full-size car is often sufficient for our trips with room for equipment and one to three passengers. Number six, book your lodging. Now that your general itinerary is complete with sleeping locations and your start and end dates have been completely finalized, book your lodging. It's important to do this early as many popular places fill up several months in advance. We have chosen tent camping. For one reason, it's by far cheaper. We're often on the go, so it's hard to justify $100 to lay down for seven hours. It's beautiful to experience the sounds and the smells of the park throughout the night. For us, camping provides us the fullest opportunity to really immerse ourselves in the diversity and the beauty of nature. Many of the national parks have wonderful campgrounds. If you care, make sure to investigate if they have flush toilets and showers. Often, there's also many private campgrounds in the area that provide a little more added comfort. Number seven, book any rentals and excursions. Often this step is not necessary or even applicable, but several of these national park locations offer both on and off-site adventures for a fee. So do you need a transport to get to a location? Do you wish to rent a bike or a kayak? Do you need to secure a permit? Do you plan to engage in an excursion like whitewater rafting or high ropes or a jeep tour? These often fill up very quickly as well. Number eight, research the specific destinations extensively. This is where it really starts to get fun. I start this process early and it becomes a work in progress right up to the day of my departure. Read internet articles, watch videos, Read about the specific park on the National Park Service website. And if you desire, check out our YouTube channel. Currently, we have about 300 uploaded videos categorized by state showing how we personally enjoy a specific national park. While much of this will be based upon your own interest, your own health, and your own endurance, determine specifically what works for you. Another tremendous reference are the helpful and friendly rangers at the park visitor centers. This is nearly always our first destination to get updates and suggestions from the trained professionals. Viewing the informational movie explaining the park is also a nice way to begin your stay. And be sure to get a park brochure that will include a map and most of the information you will need. Number nine, write your final itinerary. Now that everything is complete, write your final itinerary that you plan to bring with you on the trip. Here's some items to include. Reservation information, current high and low temperatures, sleeping locations, flight and car rental information, when to arrive and depart from the individual locations, activities you wish to pursue, backup activities, hiking distances and trails, questions to ask the rangers, reminders of what to bring, recommended places to dine, and emergency and safety information. Quite often our itinerary will be many typed out pages. We depend extensively on our itinerary, but also we're open to last minute changes. Well, there you go. It might sound like a lot, but much of this is common sense and it all becomes very familiar after organizing a few trips. Again, this is only a suggestion. This is flexible. This works for us, but modify it for your own liking. And please feel free to comment down below if there's anything I omitted that might be helpful to other people in their planning. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And by all means, enjoy our beautiful national parks with safety and respect for these special lands.